is Whisper Sister. I wanted to read some writing that I did this morning. Um, this is not a journal video, it's actually uh, an exercise from a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Campbell. Um, I'm sure I must have mentioned this before, but it was probably a long time ago, and some of you may be familiar with it, but what it is is basically a it's set out like a course, like a 12-week course with uh, different um, readings and uh, exercises to uh, aimed at getting in touch with your creativity, or more accurately, um, reconnecting with the creativity that we all have inside us that tends to get uh, buried under a lot of limitation and, um, you know, telling ourselves that it's not there trying to put it aside for the sake of being responsible and pragmatic. Um, yeah, so this exercise is called uh, Morning Pages, and what it is is basically, um, the idea is as soon as you wake up in the morning, like first thing before you do anything, uh, you, you write just three pages of whatever comes out no goal other than um, just filling three pages and getting your mind kind of woken up and draining out all of the um, clutter that you accumulate um, so that you can, you know, either um, get rid of all the superficial stuff and, and get your mind kind of ready to freed up to think more effectively and creatively, or sometimes, as is the case in, in what I wrote today, it sort of um, gets things flowing, gets ideas flowing, and, and can put you onto new ideas or, or insights that are kind of floating around in your mind, um, and give voice to those things, and a little bit of focus. So. It's also uh, well, whatever. I'm not going to judge it. I'm just going to put it out there. So, what was supposed to be three pages ended up being about four and a half pages today because I just got going on this uh, tangent, and uh, it's I guess kind of just thinking about the nature of love and uh, connection. Experience. 
all that I am exists just to provide the edges that define my viewpoint. I need to allow that energy to flow through me unimpeded. The only reason we're here is to experience, to have our own unique experience of life and report back to the mothership. That's it. To allow God to know itself. I am nothing special, nothing unique, and yet no one else can do my job. No one else can have my experience. God, please help me to truly put my ego aside. Help it take a back seat to your will. It's struggling. I left him, and my ego turned that into attachment and need. My ego is completely receptive. It is needy. It's frantic. It's stubborn and short-sighted. God, please help me loosen my grip. Help me let go. Help me to trust that it's safe and good to let go of my ego and invite you to work through me. I know it logically. I know it in theory. I need your help to really trust it and feel it. I want him in my life so badly. to experience you as expressed through him. I've seen what came through when his filter was clear and I got hooked, totally addicted. That's why I find it so hard to let him go, because I know that whatever gets in the way of that is just residue. It isn't real. Or at least it isn't necessary. When I think of him, when I remember him, I don't see any of that stuff. I see what I know is there. How can I replace the memory of him when he was gentle and hungry, with the sound of anger in his voice? How can I let myself think of those cold, hard walls when I felt the warmth that lives behind them? If that's what it takes to ease this discomfort, then I'll gladly endure it. I cannot lie to myself about him, even if that's what everyone else thinks I'm doing. They didn't see what I've seen. Well, in reality, what I saw cannot be destroyed. It's alive and well in there, and if I can step outside my ego, I can take comfort in that. It can't be destroyed, but it can be withheld. Maybe I've just mishandled my chance to experience it, proven myself to be undeserving and unsafe. That might be something I need to accept. It's only my ego that struggles with that one, and it tries to repair damage with more force. God, please help me to transcend my self-serving ego. Please make him feel it. How sorry I am. Not just for what I've lost. Uh, there are two very distinct kinds of regret here. My ego mourns the loss of something it wants, but my deeper self feels firsthand the pain I inflicted. That's why excuses, justification, and bargaining are not doing the trick. They mean absolutely nothing at that level. That part of me feels the pain, but it also knows the truth. There is nothing there but love. Please help him feel that, and then help me to dwell in it as well. Just help. <sighs> I'm afraid to relinquish control, even though I know it's an illusion. I know that punishing myself is not the answer. I know my job is the same as it's always been, to become as clear as possible in who I am, so that I can be an open, uncluttered channel for the bigger I am to use me. No wonder we keep hurting each other. Two bruised, scared egos trying to pass ourselves off as real when deep down we know each other so much better than that. When you experience what it's like for that universal, conscious, loving energy to use you to encounter itself in another human being, it's impossible to be satisfied with an imposter. It's hard to describe that chill, the loneliness of seeing walls go up to keep you separated from what you know to be there. That separation
Inspiration cuts deep. I mean, it's beautiful wherever you find it, and it happens all the time. Countless little moments when love meets itself through our interactions and multiplies. But when two people can abdicate themselves so completely to love, to be fearless and open enough to allow it access to virtually every part of themselves, to hold it all up to the mirror, that's the highest purpose in romantic love. That's what makes it unique. That's what creates that unnameable attraction, profound curiosity, the universal consciousness fascinated with itself and recognizing on an instinctual level someone who can show it something powerful and authentic. When you meet someone and you feel your soul inhale a sharp breath of surprise, of anticipation, knowing there's something there that you need to see, needs your eyes, your hands, your heart to experience what suddenly become possible. And you have no choice but to oblige, to surrender yourself, to be used until you're no longer needed. That potential, it defies explanation. It doesn't need you to understand, just to answer the call. It's attachment to form that creates the judgments of right and wrong. Of course, we'd rather learn from each other through a series of successes, but maybe sometimes it's the failures you're drawn to. Maybe the feeling is the same, no matter what form the lesson will come in. The universal curiosity is satisfied either way. But I can't help feeling a little duped, like we were used, as a means to an end, by something in completely indifferent to our suffering. That's when I sometimes struggle to believe that this consciousness is loving in nature. Still, that's only the case when I look at it from my own limited viewpoint. From that point of view, it is sad to watch all that potential squandered, ruined in the hands of a threatened ego with an immature need to be in on the plan. God, please help me to put my ego aside and accept my role in this as the privilege that it is. That my input is useful, my way of experiencing life is worthwhile, even if it causes me pain. All right, I'm not believing myself at the moment. I'm going to stop now. Yeah, so that's about it. <laughs> just see.